welcome to New Hope, a media outreach ministry of Stanley New Hope Pentecostal Church, located at 5074 Farm View Road in beautiful Stanley, Virginia. Senior Pastor Randy Miller and the Loving Congregation invite you to come and visit Sunday School at 945, Morning Worship at 1045, Sunday Evening Worship at 6, and Midweek Worship every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. For more information, call 540-778-2432 or visit us online at stanleynewhopechurch.org. This media outreach is made possible by the faithful support from our friends and partners in this area. And now, here's Senior Pastor of Stanley New Hope Church, Randy Miller. Good evening again, friends, and welcome back to our broadcast tonight. What an honor and a delight it is to have you join in Stanley New Hope Church by way of television. I look forward to this each and every week, coming into your home, into your place of business, wherever you may be tonight. I look forward to being with you through te television this evening. I'd like to just make a couple quick announcements before we get into the word tonight. First of all, I'd like to remind you of the announcement I made last week that coming up June the 26th, through the 28th, right here at Stanley New Hope Church, that's just a, just a little bit more than a month away, is our seventh annual Singing in the Valley. Now this Singing in the Valley consists of three evenings of gospel, southern gospel and bluegrass gospel music beginning on Friday evening, June the 26th with um, Mercy's Bridge Trio and Aaron and Amanda Crabb. Yep, that's right, Aaron Crabb, the original of the original Crabb family. He and his wife, along with Mercy's Bridge, they'll be here Friday evening, June the 26th. And then on Saturday evening, June 27th, the Millers from Winchester, Virginia, along with our good friend and one of the most requested gospel singers we have here, Ernie Dawson and Airline from down close to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Ernie is a blessing. If you've never heard Brother Ernie, you need to hear Brother Ernie. And then on um, uh, Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, we have Kentucky Mountain Trio. They're a bluegrass group along with the Easter family and the legendary Easter brothers. Now, Friday and Saturday start at 6.30. Sunday afternoon starts at 2 o'clock. All the concerts are held outdoors. Bring your lawn chairs. There's food and concessions available. Free will offering is received for the concerts. And in the event of rain, yeah, should we get rain, we're asking God for favor, but in the event of rain, uh, we'll hold the concerts inside the church so they're held rain or shine. Either way, we're going to have some great southern gospel and bluegrass gospel music. You won't want to miss it. Second thing I want to announce to you that I don't know that I've shared with you since we've been back on the air, but not only do we have our church here in Stanley, and it's located at 5074 Farm View Road, Stanley, but we have birthed a brand new church and we call it New Hope Outreach Worship Center. And this church is located at 1251 Virginia Avenue in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Yes, we're in Harrisonburg now too. We're in Stanley, we're in Harrisonburg. Now services in Harrisonburg are held each Friday evening at seven o'clock and each Sunday morning at 9.30. And uh, we have placed there to pastor that church, uh, Brother Mike Reynolds and his wife, Gail. They're doing a dynamic, uh, dynamic job. That church is growing. But I'd just like to invite all my friends in Harrisonburg, Rockingham County, if you're looking for a home church, uh, join us there at New Hope Outreach Worship Center, 1251 Virginia Avenue. That's on Route 42 North in the Minno Media Building, right in front of Eastern Mennonite High School. So I invite you to join us there Friday evenings at 7, Sunday mornings at 9.30. And then, of course, here at Stanley, at the Stanley location, we have services at 9.45 on Sunday morning for Sunday school, 10.45 and 6 o'clock for worship, and Wednesday uh, at 9.30 Wednesday morning and 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. So we invite you to join us. Anyway, I need to get in the Word tonight. Tomorrow is one of my favorite days on the calendar because tomorrow... 
As a church, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. 50 days after the Lord resurrected, there came Pentecost Sunday, the promise of the Father. Jesus told his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power, until you receive the promise and are endued with power from on high, the power of Pentecost, the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter two, verse number 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise, I like this, is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. And when many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation, then they that gladly received his word were baptized that same day. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man and hath need, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness, singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Father God, for these next few moments, would you allow your Holy Spirit to hide your servant behind the cross? In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Pentecost Sunday. I tell you, I love celebrating Pentecost. I love celebrating the gift of the Holy Ghost that Jesus provided to each and every one of us as a finished work on Calvary's cross. And I wanna speak for a few minutes tonight why we prayerfully value Pentecost. Here at Stanley New Hope Church and at New Hope Outreach Worship Center, we are Pentecostal churches. We are part of the IPHC, the International Pentecostal Holiness Church out of Oklahoma. And I'm proud to be a Pentecostal tonight. I'm not proud to be a Pentecostal because of the denomination, I'm proud to be a Pentecostal because Pentecostal represents, Pentecost represents the gift that Jesus promised to each one of us. Now we all know this chapter well and many of you have read it. You know this chapter starts out in the first verses that says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place, in one mind, in one accord and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the place, the house in which they were seated and they all begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance and we know that was the mighty baptism and outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. But the Holy Ghost and fire did not stop there on that Pentecost Sunday but the baptism of the Holy Ghost continued on and he continues on even to today. I just want to point this out to you. I know there's many people today that will teach that the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not for today, that tongues and the gifts of the Spirit are not for today, but I've got news for them. I've got news for anyone that would try to say that. My Bible tells me in verse 39 of chapter two, for this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off and even to as many as the Lord God shall call. I want you to know tonight, my friend, as we say, celebrate Pentecost Sunday tomorrow that the Holy Ghost and the gift thereof he is still for today his giftings his ministries are still for today because Peter said here in his message that he is for all that God chooses to call so who are you who am I or who is anyone else to say that God can't gift and equip people today with the Holy Ghost when the word of God says it's for all that the Lord chooses to call. But anyway, I want to move on. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time tonight She's speaking about the gift as far as tongues and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And that's all wonderful when I thank God for the manifestation of the Spirit of God. But what I want to focus on is verse number 46 tonight. Because in verse 46, the Bible says they continuing daily with one accord 
in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And actually, I, I want to back up there to verse 42 first. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and of breaking of bread and in prayers. I want to focus for just a moment in verse 42 and verse 46. Now again, I want you to understand I'm Pentecostal to the bone. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all of his giftings with everything that's in me. I believe in speaking in tongues. Thank God I speak in tongues through the gifting of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the word of prophecy, the word of faith, the, 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 the manifestation of miracles and healings. I believe in all of those things. I, I believe it and I'll believe it till Jesus comes that they're all in operation but I want you to focus on something tonight. This New Testament church, by the time we get to verse 42, they're not any longer just focused upon the outpouring and the tongues and all that's good and I'm not trying to diminish tongues or the giftings tonight, please understand that. But by the time we get to verse 42, we find that the Bible says they're continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. In other words, this could be translated this way. They're continuing steadfastly in sound doctrine and teaching. They're they're continuing in teaching. Can I tell you something tonight, my friend, that I believe is missing in the pulpits across this nation tonight, and that is sound doctrinal teaching. The Bible says in the last days, people will have itching ears heaping to themselves teachers that basically will tickle their ears and scratch their ears for them. But I want you to know tonight, I believe one of the ways that we can celebrate Pentecost, we need to get back to sound biblical doctrine and teaching. Listen, I don't really care what the government says. I don't care what a politician says. I don't care what another man or woman says. When God's word has already said it, it is settled. Listen, there's too many people tonight redefining the word of God, redefining sin, redefining what God has already said as sin. We need to get back to sound biblical teaching and doctrine if we're going to celebrate Pentecost like we should. The Bible says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, steadfastly in teaching. Friend, that's why it's important for you to be part of a local church. Listen, I thank God for this TV ministry, especially for those that are sick and shut in and are physically unable to get out. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're physically able to go, you need to be part of a local body of believers. You need to be part of a local assembly where you're being taught the word of God, where you're being fed the word of God, where you're learning the word of God. This New Testament church continued steadfastly daily in teaching. Not only in teaching, but look what else the Bible says. The Bible says they also continued in fellowship. Fellowship one with the other. Singleness and gladness of heart. Working together in unity. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I, I, one thing that's missing, as I said, is sound biblical teaching. But another thing that's missing in the church today is unity. There's too many people in the church that instead of coming to church wanting to work together and fellowship together, they come to church to nitpick, they come to church to find fault, they come to church to cause division, but I want you to know we need to get back like they were in this church, we need to get back in the unity of the faith. I've been teaching my children over the past couple of weeks that little song, my wife says it's an old song, but I just learned it recently, but that little song that says, if we all work together, together, together. If we all work together, how happy we'll be. For your work is my work and my work is your work. And if we all work together, how happy we'll be. We need to get back together in the fellowship. We need to get back together in unity. We need to get back together in one mind, in one accord and celebrate Jesus Christ together just as this New Testament church did. Not only did they, did they celebrate in love Learning, did they celebrate in, in fellowship, but they fellowshiped and celebrated in the breaking of bread. In other words, they ate. 
But really what he means here is they practiced the Lord's Supper. They practiced communion. They they partook of the Lord's Supper because they remember Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And not only that, but verse 42 says they continued in prayer. Church, we're missing sound doctrine teaching. We're missing the fellowship in unity. We're missing prayer in the church. I tell you something. Listen, prayer meeting should be the most attended service that your church has. We should be in prayer meeting. And it breaks my heart and it saddens my heart this evening when I think about churches, including at times right here in Stanley, when we'll have prayer meeting and so few people will show up to prayer meeting. But I'm gonna tell you something. God grew the first church, the New Testament church, and he grew the church and added to it daily 3,000 in one day, but he did this through sound doctrinal teaching, through fellowship, through communion, through prayer. You know, in order for us to really celebrate Pentecost tomorrow, we need to get back to prayer. Then move on down to verse 46 with me as we get ready to come to a close. And they continue in daily with one accord in the temple. Now look at this again. They continuing daily. I want to stop right there for a minute. Sometimes people say to me, Pastor, why do you think I need to go to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Where does the Bible say I need to go to church? One thing I hear from a lot of people today is I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, I beg to differ with that. Because, now again, I understand there are people that's sick and shut in, that's physically unable to get out. I understand, God understands. But let me say this, if you're able to go to Walmart, you're able to go to church. If you're able to go down to the local diner, you're able to go to church. If you're able to go to the yard sale, you're able to go to church. If you're able to go to the beach on vacation, you're able to go to church. If you're able to to go to the mountains on vacation, you're able to go to church. If you're able to go to work, you're able to go to church. But now, why do I say I beg to differ with I don't have to go to church to be a Christian? What's the Bible say these people did in this New Testament church? The Bible says in verse, and it's there, verse 46, and they continuing daily, not just once a week, but daily in one accord. What does one accord mean? It means in the same mindset, in the same passion, in the same focus, in the same faith. Daily, they continued this way. And where did they continue this way? The Bible says in the temple. In other words, we could translate that in 2015. Every day, they joined together in unity and went to church daily. Why? Because they loved Jesus. Why? Because of the testimony it was to the community. Why? Because the Holy Ghost and fire. Why? Because Jesus was adding to the church daily. That's what the Bible says. Not only did they go to church daily, they broke bread. And look at this. Not only did they fellowship together in church, but the Bible then says from house to house breaking bread. They visited each other in their homes. See, friend, there's many of you tonight that have ministry to do and you haven't been doing it. You say, what is that, preacher? There's people in their homes you could be ministering to tonight. You could be visiting tonight. You could be telling about Jesus tonight. We need to get back to being together in unity and fellowship and in visiting one with the other again just as they did. And look what the Bible says. It says they ate their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They didn't just go and dread going, but when they went, the Bible says they went and they enjoyed going. They did it with singleness of heart. 
they did it with gladness. Why? Because they love the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to be happy to get together. We used to sing that old song, I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Oh, what a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces praising God in heavenly places. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Look here as we close this message. Verse 47, praising God. Listen, they did something. They didn't come to church and sit on their seat and do nothing, prop up their feet and do less and need a, someone to prime them and pump them to get them to praise God. You know, I get tired of seeing times when you have to prime and pump people to praise God. They don't want to raise their hand and praise God. They don't want to stand and testify and they get mad and bent out of shape when you say something to them about praising God. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you have the same Jesus in you that I've got in me, if you've got the same Holy Ghost in you that I have in me, I'm going to tell you something. You look forward to an opportunity to praise God. You look forward to the opportunity to worship God and magnify Him and bless him. I've said this. I had one person get upset with me over it, but it's still true. I believe that your public expression of worship simply represents your private expression. If you don't worship God daily at home, you're not going to worship him publicly in church. But if you have a daily relationship, a daily worship, a daily praise life, you'll worship and praise him in the church. But i got to hurry here. Praising God, having favor with all people, and the Lord added it to the church daily. See, church, if we're going to celebrate Pentecost, let me tell you this. We need to do something. If we're going to celebrate Pentecost and we're going to see God grow the church, we don't need another program to grow the church. We don't need another seminar. We don't need to pay someone else to come and tell us how to grow the church. We just need to do what the Word says. The Word says they learned, verse 42, they continued in the apostles' doctrine. They learned by teaching. The verse 42 says that they continued not only in learning, but in fellowship, in communion, and in prayer. Verse 46 says they did it with gladness. They did it with singleness of heart. They did it daily, and they did it in the same mindset. As we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, may I encourage you tonight, my friend, to get back to what the book says and do what the Word of God says to celebrate Pentecost Sunday and to grow your church. Father God, I thank you tonight for your Word. God, I thank you even through these sinuses or allergies or whatever is attacking me this evening, God, that you've still equipped me and anointed me to deliver your message and God, I pray as we get ready to celebrate Pentecost Sunday tomorrow that a great outpouring of your spirit like this world has never seen will begin to manifest himself throughout this nation, around this world. Father, let it start on Farm View Road in Stanley, Virginia. Father, let it become contagious throughout the world for your glory and for your honor in Jesus' name. And all of God's children agreed and said amen. Friends, I want to say to you, I appreciate you joining us tonight. Now, I'm going to switch places here and make my way over to the piano, and my wife is going to come and bless you uh, with a song or so this evening. She'll bless you in the music ministry. And uh, again, I appreciate you joining us tonight, and I pray that you'll join me again this same time next week as we continue to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and in him discover life-changing truths that will bring each one of us new hope. So as I go to the piano, my wife is coming. She'll bless you in song. Thanks again for tuning in. May you enjoy this song. God bless you. There's the
Tune in next week as together we discover the truth in God's Word that brings us all new hope.